about home They're married to really stay All right, welcome back everyone Happy 2024 Happy Our New first Year, Mary. episode of the year yeah. Yay, gonna start it off right I'm so excited to be back How about you, Mary? Oh, I'm really happy to be back And to have escaped COVID Oh, yes, Yeah. Yay. COVID came in the family Two days after Christmas sure. And Carl and I tested. Our, our daughter's a singer in Boston. She, oh, God. So anyway, so she was really sick. Uh, oh. But then we, so we, she got we it did all. it. We kept it away. <laughs> so Good. we're really grateful. Good job. Yeah. Good job. And what else are you up to, Mary? How's Rotary? Rotary's awesome. Awesome. We're going to have a busy six months. Oh, actually, we need to invite Jane Seeker to come speak to us, Jane Newhouse. But for sure. Um, we are really, we're gearing up for two fundraisers, a cornhole competition. Thank you. And... <laughs> <laughs> I get Mary the look with the banging. Yes. 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 A, a cornhole competition and a golf ball drop. Oh yeah, I know. Last year I won the golf ball drop. One thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. It was awesome. So I highly recommend uh, people getting involved in that. And the other things we're going to do, and we're really looking forward to it, is we're going to engage the community to wrap food for food banks. Oh, so great. we got a small grant. We're going to be using the other funds that we have from the golf ball drop. And uh, we're going to be putting together, you know, thousands and thousands of meals for the Merrimack Food Bank. And then the other thing is um, we are attempting, our Rotary is attempting to do something toward world peace. And the that. intensity of what's happening in, in Gaza and all that, we know we can't kind of get near that right now. So we're reaching out and touching a group called Friends Forever. And they bring young people together from very disparate groups and they attempt to have like an outward bound or something, keep these kids together, mm. and they carry their experience, their tolerance for each other back to their worlds. So we'll be doing something like it's that a, within a the next six months. big mountain to climb here, it Yeah, yeah, like, and then, my, then my, my term is over and I'm done. <laughs> uh, you're going to go out um, on top, right? Yes, that, exactly. <laughs> there you go, there yeah. you go. And you, Mayor, what are you up to? So um, real estate, I had um, a closing uh, the last day of the year, so that was kind of good, but... Mm. Um, you know, now it's a reset button for the new year. Mm -hmm. So I have some things, um, you know, in the works. Interest rates coming down. Interest rates are coming down. So that's really, really good for buyers. Good. Get back out there. Talk to your lender. Get a re pre-approval. Get the whole thing done again. Um, because, you know, <clears throat> we're about to hit the season. I mean, I have a couple of houses that um, we're coming on in the next couple of months. So, um, you know, people are getting ready for the spring market already. Excellent. Who's your favorite lender? Do you have a favorite? Um, I do. I, well, I love Tony Cardinelli. Oh, Cardinelli. That's right. Yeah. And he actually just moved his office near here. So I hope to see him more involved with Westford Cat um, doing some, you know, as a business sponsor. So that'll be good. A um, hundred women. I just got a notification yesterday that um, we're up to 160 members, All right. which is up from just the last meeting um, where we had like 146. So just from that, just from people's perspective, the word it's so amazing i mean that just means we're going to be able to gift more you know to to more yes. well-deserving charities i have to say the last meeting where we'll talk with jane about yep. today was so powerful mm. so, so the power of women the power of caring the power of just presenting yep yep so that brings us to our guest today is jane newhouse of newhouse wildlife rescue in chelmsford um so welcome jane thank you she thank was you. one of our nominated charities at 100 women so um that's how i got to know you but i actually have been following your facebook page for a couple of years oh awesome um you know i love it you wonder what to do with those little critters and um you know now we have a place that that at least a resource where you know um, they can go if they're injured or need help or, mm -hmm. or all of that. So tell us about Newhouse, Jane. Uh, Newhouse Wildlife is a um, wildlife rehab, uh, rescue, rehabilitation place. Uh, and people call us if they find an animal that's injured or orphaned uh, in the area. So with, with wildlife, you can't take them to, uh, a, you know, a domestic place like Humane Society or a regular veterinary clinic. So they have to go to either a wildlife clinic or um, a licensed wildlife rehabilitator with the state. So that's what we do. And we stay pretty, pretty busy doing it. <laughs> yeah. So how many are there in the state of Massachusetts? There's actually about 200. Um, but yeah, but they're all varying levels of um, 
uh, ability to take in animals. So these, a lot of us are working in our homes uh, because it's a volunteer thing with the state. The state doesn't pay uh, people to be wildlife rehabilitators. So people do it out of their homes and they take what they can a lot of a lot of wildlife rehabbers have other full-time jobs um, so they might only be able to take a few animals at a time and there's always millions of orphan and injured wildlife in the state every year so mm -hmm. uh, we never really have enough people to do it uh, but we have we have a fair amount and everybody works really hard so and you have volunteers, a lot of volunteers. We have, yeah, we have volunteers. Um, a lot of the wildlife rehabbers have volunteers, and then we have some full-time staff, too. Great. So, we, but yeah, but we all stay really busy doing and it. And you mentioned a lot of them do it from your house. You do it from your house, yes, right? Yes, that's right. My garage was um, remodeled <clears throat> into a medical facility, so it's... Uh, it looks really good for what we had to work with, you know? <laughs> uh, it was remodeled with... with uh, a lot of electrical for incubators, for uh, medical equipment and uh, temperature regulation in the room. We have multiple rooms with different temperatures when we're trying to acclimate animals back to the outside. Um, the walls are, are like plastic so they can be cleaned because you can't trust squirrels not to pee on the walls. It's, it's <laughs> I noticed that. Right. Yeah. Every job has some hazards, but yours are you really know, they out there. You the edge of the cave and it's like, oh no. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. So it's definitely, the room had to be modified and, so, and we have like epoxy on the floor so it's easy to keep clean. We have veterinarians that will actually come visit uh, and care for the animals there, but we'll also bring them to, to veterinarians and, and clinics. So. Um, we have semi-aquatic enclosures in my backyard that house either otters or beavers when necessary. So we've done the max that we can with the space. You know, I have 0.6 acres at my home. So basically the entire wow. garage and then a third of my yard is all um, enclosures and stuff like that to, to help the critters. So it's definitely got bigger than I ever thought that it would. And you have uh, plans for it to be even bigger, right? That's right. The plan is, so it was interesting. We got reported by one of our neighbors because she had a raccoon um, uh, kill her chickens. And she was very upset about this. And um, she assumed that the raccoon came from us. Uh, and so she reported us to the town, and I don't know who it was. It could have been a he. I don't know why I'm saying she, mm -hmm. but reported us to the town, um, and it started this whole investigation. And in all actuality, now legally we can release animals uh, within five miles of our facility, my home, mm -hmm. uh, or five miles of where they were found. But we don't release all of our our raccoons, uh, any of our raccoons in my neighborhood because right. we take care of 60 per year. Oh my and gosh, And all that's my a lot. neighbors would be complaining. But I think that this person was very upset emotionally. She lost like her chicken. Chickens. She wanted somebody to, to, to blame. And, and I understand that, I get that. Um, and so after that, the town had to come uh, do inspections and they noted that my cages were too close to the abutting property. Uh, though my though all my neighbors were fine with it, my my abutters, my abutting mm -hmm. neighbors, none of them have any complaints. And and honestly, if anybody did, they would have the right. You know, occasionally we get skunks, <laughs> so, <laughs> but they're all so supportive. Uh, so um, so we ended up having this 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 big issue where the town was, they were very nice, but they were like, we have to you right, know enforce the, rules are the, the rules. laws. Yeah. And then we got this. Um, amazing attorney, uh, Nancy Cook's daughter, Melissa, um, what is Melissa's last name? Do you remember she's a real estate attorney and um, Nancy's daughter, do you know her? Um, I'm sorry, I heard her last name again. She's well known around. As Robbins, I think Robbins. Oh, I Robbins, believe. okay. She's amazing. She's amazing and uh, she volunteered to help for free. We were all like, all hope is lost. We can't just move our enclosures over 10 feet. One of them is a semi-aquatic enclosure with like a pond in the ground. Yikes. And she came in and uh, she called me. She's like, Jane, I'm obsessing over this. I'm reading everything, all the rules, all the regulations, and uh, I'm gonna figure this out. And then she found a clause where, because we're an educational facility, we don't have to abide by the abutter rules. Oh. Um, there's a Do Doberman clause, I mm -hmm. believe is what it's mm -hmm. called. Mm -hmm. um, so when she presented the town with that, they dropped everything. Oh. Um, and so it ended up working, working out. out. Yeah. But it was a reminder to us, I think all of us that were working there, is that 
we have outgrown the space. Um, we are at a point now where we need our own separate space for the animals. We need an actual clinic. And lots of uh, buffer to the Yeah, abutters. lots of buffer space. <laughs> so it was, you know, as much, it was really scary. We thought we were going to have to shut down. We would have to move everything. Um, but it was a blessing in some ways, too, because I think it gave me the push that I needed to actually say, OK, it really is time for us to take that next step. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've been doing is we've been raising funds for a new clinic. Uh, we've been looking at properties. We've been talking with architects. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to build a wildlife clinic, uh, hopefully in Chelmsford. I saw your that post the other day um, specifically saying we're looking to certain plots of land in the Chelmsford area yep. that may be owned by the town. Yep. And so I think that that's part of a campaign, essentially, is to alert or educate the town to possible use of, of the town, of the, the land property, that, that our right. town owns. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's uh, so we're hoping we have some plots of land in mind and we we're in, talking with the town. We need to go to a few more meetings and just see like what legally we can we can use um and uh and if if the space is available would be best suited for what we need it for um so it's still there's so much uh such a long process a lot going on with it but um but i'm very hopeful i know i know we'll get it done i don't know exactly where <laughs> but we'll get it done well that's how dreams come true i think right. your passion and then you make it happen it just things fall into place yes and your hard work and dedication and you can obviously see you have this love and passion for these wildlife animals which i do a little and you know, scary to me but uh, it can be it can be we got a bobcat this year and that was like oh my god that was that was probably <clears> the the most difficult animal i've ever had to work with cats are hard to hold down like if anyone's ever worked in a veterinary clinic and worked with domestic cats or maybe you just have a cat when they don't want to be held down they're so hard because they'll shoot those claws and twist every which way um but i will say too that what i've been shocked by the most since i started this was was the support from the community like people are like what do you need how can we help like the fact that my garage is a medical facility is all from donations mm -hmm. wow. from people that saw what we were doing every day i'll post this is the animal we receive this is what we're doing sometimes they make it sometimes they don't uh but people always see what we're doing and then when i was like i want to build a semi-aquatic enclosure like we had the funds in a couple of days That's you know incredible. and people are like what do you they really are they're like what do you need and every time i've done a post saying this is what we're trying to do the community has backed us up 100%. So this, it, it's been really motivating on the hard days, the days when you lose the animals, the days when you're like, oh my God, I haven't slept in three days, feeding baby everything, you know? <laughs> but knowing that people are like, we got you, we support you, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It feels really good. What's your goal for your building? What's your financial goal? The goal is 500,000. Mm -hmm. In speaking with architects and the square footage that we want, that's approximately how much we would need. Um, we th we've raised over 160,000 so far. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah, that's so uh, the starting, uh, we only started in October. So uh, it's still a big goal to try and get the rest. We were applying for grants and stuff too, um, but I'm glad because it's gonna take a while to find the property. It's gonna take a while to design this place too because when you speak with architects, there's not a whole lot of wildlife clinics out there. So you can't just Google wildlife clinic Floor layout. Floor plans, you know? yeah. Floor plans. Right, 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 right. It's not, you know, you can, you can <laughs> right. do veterinary There's no clinic. Pinterest for that. There's no there Pinterest, really yeah. Isn't. yeah. And, uh, and that's what makes it really difficult is there's not a lot of people who know a lot about, there's not a lot of wildlife rehab rehabilitators out there. And so when I'm talking to the town about conservation property, they're like, I don't know if what you do falls under conservation. And I'm like, it's, it won't be written anywhere whether it does or doesn't because the, there's not rules and regulations right now around that. Like I have, I have rules I need to follow with the state. You know, mm -hmm. the state has very specific rules about like how the cages are supposed and, to be. Sure. Yeah. Um, but as far as like the each rehabilitator does have to work with their individual town, but the towns don't have like, OK, here's our wildlife rehabilitator book. These are the rules and regulations mm -hmm. you need to follow with the town. Right. So um, there could be an argument of is what we're doing conservation, you know, and I think there's a strong argument that it is. We're literally conserving our wildlife. We're not working with domestic animals. So uh, and a lot of what we do is all the animals that we treat is from human interference. It's from hit by car, someone cut down a tree, somebody poisoned a bunch of rats and the foxes ate them or a bird of prey ate the poisoned rats. And so um, 
so much of what we do is is trying to help with the amount of difficulty we cause as humans for the yes. animals that surround surround us so mm. um let's talk more about fundraising sure i know you have a fundraiser coming up soon right yes we do the salute wine bar in littleton we're so excited about that that's on january 30th it starts at six and people don't have to buy tickets to go uh but we're doing raffles so we were going to ask any local businesses if they have anything they'd like to donate for the raffle. We would be super excited. Um, and anyone that wants to come is invited to come. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. We're going to have – we'll be there. My team will be there. Um, there will be lots of amazing prizes to win. We'll have videos of the animals there. Okay. So, And the, the owners are great there. Yeah, they really um, are. They are wonderful. So it's a nice place. Did you follow your theme? What was your theme? Oh, I know. We had a, I had a couple ideas that night, but no. I th- I, yeah, I think they, they've got their own plan, but, Sounds but good. we're happy to help. We would love to help. And, and, and if not this one, maybe another one. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That would be great. That'd That's be great. awesome. Yeah. So what's the number one thing people can do to, to help you, to help New House Wildlife? I think some of, the, some of the most basic things people can do is just spread information. Um, share your posts on Facebook. Sharing like a it. post is great. So we can. Well, our goal is to never have to touch an animal to spread enough information that there we can save animals without ever having to contain them to hurt them. Spreading the information about uh it's okay if nocturnal animals are out during a day it doesn't mean they have rabies what are the signs and symptoms of rabies you know um how do we live with what do we do when we have a raccoon in our attic do we have to kill the animal to remove it no there's actually ways to to get the animal to leave without ever ha- calling any sort of pest control company hmm. don't use rat poison if if that's the only thing people learn from following me i'd be ecstatic you said you um, treat a lot of that we do i, I lost a fox yesterday i oh. lost a fox yesterday not one of uh, not one of the pair no not not the pair right. there's one from ipswich i rescued a week ago and we've been trying and trying and trying and guys like I stayed up so many nights with this fox, and I really thought we got him, like, to where he was stable. And uh, it was definitely, like, a very strong emotional thing. So it's funny, because I should be here saying, we really need donations for the clinic, which we absolutely do. But I guess, like, my big thing, if people just took one thing from hearing me talk, it would be, please, please, like, I just have this fox fresh in my mind, you know? And I just, I'm so tired of seeing these animals dying from uh, from being poisoned. So, um but yeah, sharing information. If people can donate to the cause of the wildlife clinic, that'd be great. Especially people in Westford, Chumsford, Lowell, people that are around here. There is no wildlife clinic close to us. You know, there's mm-hmm. me working in my garage. Right. <laughs> so a clinic would be definitely really helpful. Very efficiently. Yeah. Very efficiently. Yeah. So is, is rat poison illegal? No, it's not. Um, it's second generation rat poison um, is supposed to only be used by professionals. And they they'll tell you that it's safe because it goes into a box, so right, uh, so only a mouse or a rat can fit in the box, um, which is true. Maybe a chipmunk. We've we've seen chipmunks and, and squirrels get poisoned, but what we're noting is that it's not that these animals are getting directly into the box. Is that they're eating these mice or these rats that are compromised with rat poison, um, and the rat poison will stay in their system for six weeks. So if they just eat one mouse or one rat, that's not going to kill a fox. But the problem is that's all these guys do all day is they're eating mice and rats. They're helping us Uh with the rodent population Mm -hmm. as it is. You know, one great horned owl will eat 2,000 rodents every year. But if it eats six or seven poison rodents and it dies, you know, the rest of those rats are running free. That's right. That's right. So it's actually not, it's a short sighted way of dealing with rodents. So on your website, do you have, you know, tips and resources and that kind of stuff? Yes. And there's a, um, there's a page called rats, um, that's actually it is a Facebook page. It's rats. Um, raptures are the solution is what it stands for. And they give all kinds of information on, on other ways to uh, to help prevent rodents from coming into your home, mm-hmm. other ways dealing with them when they have come into your home. So, so much information out there about other, other avenues and how to treat it. So besides rat poison, what what's, um, what's your biggest challenge? I think... Education, uh, obviously trying to raise the funds right now for the clinic, but I think that um, right now with a lot of the educational talks that we do, it's, it's how to tell people what to do if they find an animal that needs help. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times in 
the spring and the summer when we have the babies, people will find a baby animal and they want to feed it. That's the first thing they want to mm-hmm. do. They want to feed it so bad. And a lot of times the animal is emaciated. It's very, very skinny. So they're like, I just need to feed it. Um, and the problem is that most of these animals are hypothermic, right? They can't self-regulate when they're very young. They need mom for that. So if they haven't seen mom, they're usually hypothermic or they're very dehydrated. And you have to correct those two things before you can offer food. If those two things aren't corrected, I'm touching the table. You told me not to touch the table. Uh, sorry. Talking with my hands. Um, but if, if those things aren't corrected, you can actually shut down the animal's whole body because they can't process. Wow. If, oh, wow. If they're hypothermic, their body is conserving energy. They have so little energy that it's just going to absolutely imperative functions like the heart beating or the kidneys functioning. Right. So if... Um, if you feed them and they have to divert energy to digestion, it can kill them. If they're super dehydrated uh, and you're offering them food, the, the intestines have to pull water from the body into the intestines to help with digestion. If it doesn't have any water to pull, it can't digest. Hmm. So the biggest thing I tell people is when you find the animal, wear gloves, be safe, put them in a warm, dark, quiet place, so somewhere where they can get warm. If you bring me a dehydrated um hypothermic starving animal that you've not fed i can probably save it most of the time i can save it Mm -hmm. if you take that same exact animal and you feed it before you bring it to me there's nothing i can do to save it oh wow so it's something a lot of people don't know really caring genuine people they're literally just trying to help and they don't know that what they did unfortunately caused a cascade effect that i couldn't i couldn't address yeah. so um we can't even give them subcutaneous fluids when they're hypothermic that will shut their body down oh, we wow. have to warm them so i also tell people if you can warm that animal before you bring it to me if while you're waiting for me to call you back you've got them on a heat pad that's amazing because then as soon as they get to me i can start hydrating and oh. uh but if they're cold it's sometimes it's, it takes hours of them being in an incubator to get them warm enough where we can do anything um but i'd still take them cold over fed so right. you know how's okay. your coyote doing the one i saw in an incubator did she oh, survive that's right. the coyote was there yeah, when yeah, you came yeah right. she, uh she was transferred to berkshire wildlife services uh-huh. so coyotes take a specific permit and um and we don't have that permit but she was found in littleton and she was in soft such rough shape i called the state and i was like oh uh, i do not i can't get her to tufts she will not make the ride. I don't know if she's going to make the ride to my house, which is just like 15 minutes away. But um, she was so anemic. She was hypothermic. Um, she was barely breathing. So we had to get her in the incubator, get her on oxygen. I, I can't believe she made it. I can't wow. believe it. But Terrific. she did. That yeah. Is, um, and, uh, and, and Berkshire Wildlife Services has been posting updates. She's actually with a, a male now. Oh. And they're going to spend the, the winter there together. Because even when you get them stable, she had mange really bad. Yes, right. And her blood wasn't clotting properly. And right. she was anemic. So uh, she can't be released this winter. Because it's going to take weeks and weeks and weeks for her fur to grow back. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, but Berkshire Wildlife Services is amazing. That's who we send uh, all the coyotes to. And the deer. They, they do the deer in Massachusetts, too. Oh. I'm curious about the circle of life. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we find an animal that's been attacked by, let's say, a raptor. Yeah. What, what do you do? Do you let the it, raptor come eat the animal? Or? If the raptor is mid-feeding, please don't interrupt it. Because I've received animals where people interrupted it. And half the time, I can't save that animal. And then that raptor went hungry. Like, if the raptor caught that animal fair and square it is a circle of life and it's hard to witness it's not something i want to watch but it has to happen um if a raptor or some animal attacked another animal and then left it and that animal is just laying there suffering absolutely bring it to me um but i have received several animals that people have stopped in the middle of a normal natural occurrence of predator catching and eating prey and uh, it, oh, it always bothers me because it's hard to watch, but that mama, uh, you know, uh, owl has babies to feed or she has to feed herself. And who knows how many days she went without eating, waiting for, for a catch, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'd rather we will not get involved with that. I know it's hard. It's hard. Na- Mother Nature can be cruel. Really cruel. Yep. It can be so cruel, but 
she's been uh, at this way longer than we have, and uh, nothing we could do about that, you know? We start right. our summer with about 12 squirrels around our bird. We have a big platform bird feeder, squirrel yeah. feeder. <laughs> and we start feeder. about 12, about up to 12, where it's a 12, <laughs> it's a 12 squirrel day is what the announcement goes through the house. And so... But then within a month or two, when all the raptors are flying around and the squirrel population is decimated. We have nothing. Really? Too. Well, if you have a bird feeder that's out in the open, right, and these and the hawks take note ah. that all the time ah. we've got these a bunch <laughs> Put of the squirrels. Lights on, right? This is the party I place. Would, <laughs> I would, if, if you have a space like that, put somewhere where the squirrels have cover. Right. This just has cover over it, but but yes, more cover maybe. But they'll see the squirrels cut like closer yes, right. to an actual gotcha. tree, um, because I've I had that happen. The first group of squirrels that I raised, um, I I released in my yard and I kept feeders out for them. Uh, I would keep a dish out, and and I keep it right near my screen door. And one morning I went to uh, open my curtains. I had coffee in my hand. I was just checking this to see if the squirrels were feeding. And as I opened the curtains, a huge hawk slammed into the to the huh. to the screen. Right. He was trying to get one of the squirrels. And uh, luckily he did it, because they were ones we raised. It'd be hard to watch though, I understand. <laughs> but I was like, ooh, I can't keep doing this. Because the way the place I had the food, I was uh, setting them up for failure. Right. There was no it needs to be near trees, you okay, know? Okay, we'll work um, on this. So I guess in that way. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we've been feeding the raptors. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, exactly. The raptors are like, we love this we lady. Love this yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I have to be cautious about, I don't, I try not to release the squirrels where we are because um, the raptors love watching my cages. I'll, they'll sit on top oh. of the cages sometimes and just be like, when, when's he up for release? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's looking pretty fat. Right. I think he's good to go. And you're not a raptor grocery store by right, any means. Right, a right. restaurant. I love so. it. I love so, it. I love but it. I get it too. Is a yeah. point because we get raptors and and those those get transferred because those require a special federal permit. But we'll triage um, uh, and get them you know stabilized so that they can go to a raptor rehab rehabilitator. And they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous. You know, yeah. every one of them. I've 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 rehabbed mice before. You know, and they're so adorable. And I rehab the animals that eat them. It's yeah, a complete exactly. respect for that's that's all natural. They're not doing it to be mean. They're no, doing it to survive. Mm, right. you know, that's just yeah. the rules that they were given when they were born. So <laughs> <laughs> got to do it. If all things could be that cut and dry and Would clear be. and right. Yeah. Would be. <laughs> so this is fascinating. You know, the fact that it, it, and a real estate issue is, of course, that there's an activity going on in a community that may have raised concerns among mm -hmm. some person. But um, and, and I like the other point that that. Uh, that Jane made was each town has different rules. Right. Just like real estate. Just like real estate. Really? Yeah. It's the same. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, if you have your, your a septic and you need to have uh, a water test or you don't, some right. towns require it, some really? don't. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. so difficult. Putting out real estate things. signs. And where, yeah. It, yeah, in Northern Virginia, where, where I have my, my real estate experience, we had a huge county. And the county regulated everything except some of the small towns with their small towns within the, incorporated within the county. If you put an extra sign out on the street, you put one open house, one. We're supposed to do 12 for my office for each open house. Oh, my God. <laughs> Minimum. <laughs> Minimum. And then, and then after your open house, you have to go to the police station, climb into the dumpster, and get your signs. No. <laughs> but so, so every town is different. Yeah. And I think coming up here to sell real estate, that was the hardest part, Mayor. Was it? Was I didn't know the towns, and I didn't know all of their idiosyncrasies right. and... So it made it it made it hard to feel competent um, just because of the difference in regulation. Yeah, I know for me with real estate in Massachusetts, I thought it was very interesting how the boundaries, you know, the, there are boundary markers. And so they still have some of that old timey, you know, from this post to that northwest facing post is, you know, that line mm -hmm. lot line of oh, the big rocks too yeah, yeah big rocks big and this rock like wall back in the day. Yeah. yeah i mean yeah. so it's really i mean i grew up in illinois so we don't have things as old as out here but yeah um yeah I, that just has always stayed with me from our real estate exam <laughs> Yeah, fa fascinating that, you know, you you was a homeowner because you're a homeowner. You have right. a family. And um, so and that was the other thing. The other thing that I saw over the past couple of months was somebody posted your address and that caused you a concern oh. about uh, Why security. Would people you know? do that? Well, it was a news reporter for the Lowell Sun. 
she um, she had done uh, we had granted her uh, an interview and a lot of news reporters were trying to to tell the story whenever we thought we were going to have to move we weren't sure how things were going to go with the town and what she did she didn't actually post my address but she's she spoke with my neighbors to see how they felt about things and she posted their names their ages and their addresses hmm. now she asked me after she interviewed me can i speak with your neighbors and i was like can you not can you just they deal with enough living beside me they're great they've sent letters to the town i'd rather they not have to also deal with news reporters showing up to their house she's like okay yeah no problem hmm. and the next day she knocked on their doors and they gave great right interviews, interviews it, it, and... it helped me you right. know in that way but it hurt she all posts of you. their their information there and i i called her afterwards i'm like hey please please edit your um your uh your report please just remove their addresses i would appreciate it she never returned my call oh it's a shame never responded i reached out to the lull son i'm like hey i have two kids that live here you know i'm trying to keep my family safe i'm trying to keep the animals here safe not everybody loves animals nibby the beaver that i take care of is famous she's on national geographic <laughs> she's been on cnn there's oh, wow. a video of her building a dam that has over 11 million views i don't need any nibby fans going over my head <laughs> right they would not even re- give me the decency of a response yeah i couldn't believe it yeah i well, couldn't believe it Common sense is not that common. I guess right? not. I, I mean, guess I've worked with a lot of uh, reporters, you know, and uh, Kate Merrill from WBZ. She's like, I'm, I love her. I love her. She's the anchor there. And like anything, she's like, is it okay if I write this? Is this, I'm not going to film the front of your house. I can tell this is your personal where you live. I'm just going to film the back. So consider it not just about getting the good. story, yep. but about respecting mm-hmm. people. And I've learned, she's like, she, she, and she warned me. She's like, they're not all that way. You, you do got to be careful. You know, right. so a lesson learned right. from that. No more, no more interviews with, with Lowell's son for Newhouse mm-hmm. Wildlife Rescue, unfortunately. And then the other thing, too, I don't know if you, you know, Robin Grant in Chelmsford. She just posted a fundraiser, a birthday fundraiser for Newhouse. Oh, so that's something that could catch on, too, is yep. that I've never posted a fundraiser. You've, you've posted fundraisers. Not for, for my birthday on Facebook, but I've seen them. You've seen I've them, donated. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah, so, yep. so anyway, so there are people out there doing that. So that's something yeah. you could also it's, promote. So much support. Or like there's an Amazon so support. wish list. I'm sure yes. you can get supplies for you. Yes, we do that. We do that yeah. every time we post a list. It's it's empty within one or two days. That's great. You know, it's, awesome. I'm telling you, the support it keeps me motivated during the hardest times. I'm like, I'm not the only one that wants this. There, the, we the the community wants this for these animals. So uh, I know we're not alone, and I know we're doing the right thing, and I know I know we'll get the clinic built. And yeah. uh, I'm excited about it. That's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So where can people find you? What's your website? What's so your... we're at newhousewildliferescue.org. Uh, we constantly update Facebook. That's the that's the page that I'm frequently updating. We do have an Instagram. We do have a TikTok. Um, <laughs> I think I'm too old for those because every post <laughs> I do, I want to write the whole story and <laughs> capture the feeling and instagram's like you got like three sentences and i'm like no um, so uh so but i definitely post regularly on facebook and that's where you, you know i'm trying to get better about instagram i have a younger member of my team doing tiktok i just can't yeah. i just can't uh and we have a youtube channel too but um but yeah newhousewildliferescue.org has our website uh, has our fundraisers, has information on what to do if you find wildlife. It also has yeah. our events. We do a lot of free educational talks. We just did one um, Monday. Was it Monday? No, Tuesday. Oh, my God, this whole week because I didn't sleep with right. that fox. It's one big, long day. <laughs> Monday was a holiday. <laughs> okay, so so we just did a talk for the Essex uh, Technical College hmm. um, over in Danvers. Mm. Amazing. Mm. They they do a lot of animal classes for vet vet assistants and oh, things. Oh wow! Nice. Nice. Yeah. So we talked with like fifty of their students about wildlife rehab, and a lot of them were interested in wildlife rehab. That was yeah. really awesome. Terrific. And yeah. So it's it's and we have this whole presentation we do. We're we're gonna present to the uh, Lowell schools. Uh, we speak with like over nine hundred kids. I think next week. I'm super excited to do that. Lovely. But sp- the whole thing, like I said, about the education, because yep. we can prevent so many deaths, right. you know, uh, and that that is that is always the overall goal. So um, 
So super, super excited about that. I forget what the question was. I can go on and on. <laughs> we love it. So I know, we do love it. We love you, Jane. And we love, love your Jane. passion for this. It's amazing yeah, and, thank and contagious. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. thank you. So yeah. thank you so much. And thanks for sh- letting us share in it with you because Absolutely. that's what the passion does. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and we'll it. be at your fundraiser. Yeah. Cool. January 30th at coming. Salou of yep. Littleton. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep. good. All right. Good. Jane, thank, thank you. you. Awesome. You're Great. welcome. Talking about home.